adjust to using Zoom lately. And so I want to take some time and actually go through with you how to use Zoom. I'm going to start from the website. As you can see, this is zoom.us. Now, some of the features that I go through may not be the same that you have because I have a pro account. So you may or may not have some of the same features. So let's go. As you can see, you can join a, a meeting right here. Um, you can host a meeting. Uh, it tells you whether you want the video on or video off. This is basically when you start the meeting. Do you want the video on or off? Um, but let's go ahead to my account and I want to set up a meeting. So I can show you how to set up a meeting from here. This is all my information. Um, this is my personal Zoom ID and I'll tell you a little more about that in just a second. So let's say I'm scheduling a meeting. Uh, and so I can name the meeting. So for with students. All right, and then I'm gonna say week 20, yesterday was the 23rd, I believe. Through 27th, all right. Um, well, actually, let's take this, let's do this. Boom, I'm gonna put the, so I'm gonna use this to check in with my students and I want this to be today and I wanna check in with them at 1.30 p.m., all right. So 1.30 p.m., I'm gonna check in with my students and I can make the meeting last for an hour. <clears throat> Reoccurring meeting or not, that's kind of self-explanatory. Registration, if it's required or not. Basically, do they have to have a Zoom account to get into this meeting? I wouldn't use that. Um, so here's the difference. When you have a pro account, I can generate automatically a individual meeting room. So I use this because I like my individual meeting rooms to be separate. But otherwise, you'll use your personal meeting ID, which is the same. Uh, for every meeting if you have the free account if I'm not mistaken um, password I encourage you not to require a password um, but if you're using your personal meeting ID so if you have a free account then I would say use the password so once again if you have to use your personal meeting ID then I would give a password because it's going to give them a separate password for each meeting that way you don't have people randomly joining in meetings that you're already uh, hosting uh, the video, the video on or off when they log into the meeting. So I like to keep mine off when they log into the meeting uh, for the host and the participants. And then if they don't know how to turn it on, you just guide them through how to turn it on. Uh, this is important. You want to make sure that you have the audio for both the computer. If you're not doing anything international, then you don't have to change this country. Um, this is basically if you have international people calling in and joining your meeting, do that until that meeting ends. So mute participants upon entry. On the local computer or in the cloud I'll um, as you can see our calendar so let me put it on my Google Calendar. Take a sip of this cough um, <clears throat> and it's winding here it goes forwarding come on baby math tutoring I'm driving uh, for the next and I would greatly appreciate or if you're you teachers you know a math teacher that is more elementary Let's say you want to set up a meeting in the meantime, I guess 1.30, okay, over here. Um, I wanna say, I can be self-explanatory, okay? I'm not, so my personal email, come on. There we go, email as well. So I can add all the people that I want. So I wanna save that. Now they can have a link to actually, actually click and join the meeting from the calendar. Would you like to send emails to Google Calendar? Uh, I'm not gonna send it, cause this is just to me, okay? So let's dismiss. So now let's go back to here. Now. Um, oh, real quick. So when you when we were talking about recordings and your local recording, so these are my classroom website. So recording. Now notice I have the shared screen. So this shows the video audio only. I can download these if I want to post this to a website, my right here, and go paste it elsewhere. Remember to be accessible if you copy the link, download it, and then play, paste the file on your school website or whatnot, and still be able to view it. So let's go back. Local recordings are the recordings that are saved to my computer. And this actually tells me exactly where it is. And you will get warnings of different files. Okay, I'll talk to you about um, host video on. These are the same settings we've gone through already. But two things I want to talk to you about here is, as you can see, you can tell whether you want the calendar. Most of these are the same thing. Uh, you can send reminders. Mine always sends, real, sends me reminders. You can allow participants to uh, save the chat. 
you can also have private chat. So if you have 10 people in your meeting, two people can send messages privately to one another. Uh, this is all kind of self-explanatory, but let's go into this is important. Whether you want to hear a sound when people join the meeting or leave the meeting. Um, let's see. Survey feedback. Okay. You can post surveys if you have the um, pro version. And then you can also do polls within it. I like that too. Um, you can, as you can see, like you can kick people out the meeting. You can put an attendee on hold and things like that. Screen sharing is important. All right. Who can share? Like if you're, depending on. What kind of if you're doing a faculty meeting or a department meeting, then you can have each individual person share their screen or you can be the only one to share their screen. OK, so notice who can start sharing the screen when someone else is sharing. So all of this is um, pretty much self-explanatory. Annotation is important because you can bring up a website and you can actually annotate on that page. Uh, I use that for my tutoring. The whiteboard is important. Uh, this controls whether or not other people can share their whiteboard and things like that. Ro remote control. When I'm tutoring, I actually give remote control to my clients, but you can turn that off. Um, there's still a second layer of protection when you give someone remote control. You have to approve it. Or, and they can request control of your screen as well. Uh, you got breakout rooms, which is important. That's for the pro account. Um, Virtual backgrounds are cool if you want to put a, a logo or something behind you, a picture. If you have a plain white or black wall, a plain wall behind you, or if you have a green screen. Um, something else. Attention tracking, like, I wouldn't go into all of that. But um, here, if you want to use this later on, you want to go live. Let's say you want to go live on YouTube for for your students or something like that or Facebook you can set this up in the settings you have to go turn this on it's not gonna automatically come on um, notice these are things that tell you when the when the recordings are available and all this this is all self-explanatory but one thing I want to show you is that uh, where is it at um, tell you when the cloud is gonna be ter permanently deleted um, there is another one that I wanted to show you all. Um, it's not coming up. Okay. Um, I don't see it right now. Um, but there was another one I, I wanted to show you all where you can actually do something else that's important it'll probably come to me okay so that's from the website all right so now we can also go to the zoom app oh that's it i want to show you all whether you have to require them to download okay require password okay there's a way just a second um where is it at Um, here, right here, show a join from the browser link. So what this is, is if a person, if you turn this on, then the person does not have to download Zoom. This is very, very important. I would turn this on so that way they don't necessarily have to download Zoom. They can just, it'll just take them through the web browser. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was what I was looking for. So let's go to the Zoom app. And I'm going to actually start a meeting. Um, first of all, uh, my meetings, it'll tell me upcoming meetings. Boom. Uh, these are all meetings that I have coming up. You can add contacts and things like that, and you can integrate your contacts. I don't have any contacts, as you can see. I can join a meeting, start a new meeting right here, and I can turn off the video if I don't want to start it with the video. Here, I can turn one on. I can use my personal meeting ID. I can copy the invitation right here. And paste it and send it in an email directly to someone and this changes my personal meeting ID settings and whatnot um, but if you're using so so like you can bring this up um, well I won't bring it up but it just tells you the same options pretty much that we just did from the website uh, I can schedule a meeting right here and this is going to take me through here boom it's all the same thing same exact things that we just went through but it's just a shortcut if I want to just join a meeting 
So I got an email notification. I already know I have the app. All I need is that personal meeting IDs and save them. There, you can change your name. Like I can be my business name. Once again, I can uh, tell it not to connect to the audio when I log in. And I can tell it to, if I click these, it's going to turn off my video when I log in. Uh, so I like to keep that um, checked right there. And boom, I can join a meeting. But I'm going to cancel that. Uh, you can share your screen from here, as you can see, different settings. Um, I'm not going to wait on that. I'm going to actually start a movie, I mean, a, a screen, so boom. Uh, so I can share my screen, so boom, let's start a meeting. Hello, wonderful people. All right, so I'm starting this meeting, and um, in this meeting... In a second, once it's connected, you're going to see a few things. So notice I automatically have it to record. So right here, I'm going to stop the recording because I won't need the recording of this meeting because I'm actually doing a screen capture. But I can pause. As you can see, I can pause the recording. Notice it gives you a notification that the file is going to be converted. Uh, mute and unmute are right there. Um, I can tap this to turn off the screen and turn back on my, my computer on my um camera i can set invites here i can tell all who's participating boom it'll tell me right here whether they're muted or on camera or not i can mute all from here unmute all and then there's all these other different things from here uh, i can go into the chat well let's let's polling is only is not going to be on the free version uh i don't believe uh, i can share my screen when i share my screen i can share my desktop i can share like a website that i'm on i can share my whiteboard Boom. And then from here, boom, I can do all this. From here, I can, like, uh, allow other people to annotate and things like this. All of this is right there. Um, you got all kinds of different tools up here to play with. I won't go through all of those, but those are a bunch of cool tools. Uh, so let's stop screen sharing. And as you can see, the picture is still up in the corner. You can see whoever's there. Uh, you can check the chat. Boom. You can send files through the chat. You can change your different emoji reactions. I only have two available. Here, if you want to go live on Facebook, I can click that or YouTube, and it'll go right there. It'll tell me I can change if I want to record this mid-meeting, record to the computer or the cloud. I can start a breakout room, which will break up the people on the meeting into groups. You can put a timer on that, and then... If they're in the breakout room during the time when the timer is up, it'll tell them they have one minute left. And um, once the one minute is up, they'll automatically all come back to the main room where you are hosting the meeting. Uh, so those are some cool features. There's the raise hand feature. So in the chat, it might not show right here, but you can have people raise hand because if you have a lot of people on your meeting, you don't want everybody like. Everybody, you can't see everybody that's on the screen. So you use the raise hand feature, which actually I think you can go from here. No, I won't let it do because I'm only on here with one person. But there's a raise hand feature, which people can locate from the chat. And you can see as the host, you can see who has their hand raised. So I can call and I can say Dana. I can say DJ. I can say Mr. Jackson, uh, Miss Smith, things like that. And, and individually, and I can lower their hands as well because a lot of people, they don't remember to lower their hands. Um, those are some of the great features of Zoom. Uh, these same features are down here. So that's pretty much it. Um, now I can end the meeting. I can leave the meeting or I can end the meeting. In this case, I want to end the meeting. And uh, it'll tell you, like you'll see in a second, that it's going to produce a recording or convert it. So it's recording the meeting, and after that, it's going to save it. Okay. And I can go locate that either in my files on my computer or I can go locate it on the website uh, in the cloud. So that is Zoom. Hopefully this was very, very helpful for you. Once again, do me a great big favor. Share this. Subscribe to the channel. And um, I hope this added some value to you. Remember, we will get through all of this, but I just wanted to actually offer some help for people that are not familiar with Zoom. And I will... Talk to you all later, as I always in my meetings with Deuces.